Hi and welcome to Morgana's Monday tutorials. Today she's going to be painting this beautiful um, winter scene. It's a semi-abstract landscape with this wonderful fox and she's painted it with a palette knife. It's a really interesting process and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it and it's also on the playlist that we've got for Christmas card ideas. Hello everybody and welcome. It's Morgana here uh, for your special weekly Morgana Mondays video tutorial. Uh, today's video is going to be the semi-abstract winter snow scene with a lovely fox uh, which I'm going to paint for you using a palette knife today. I'm beginning today with some Saunders Waterford watercolour paper. This is Hot Press High White. Uh, it's a quarter imperial sheet so uh, roughly 15 inches by uh, 11 inches or 38 centimeters by 28. Uh, so this is the main tool I will be using to create the background uh, setup for this painting, the background wash. This is a mid-sized palette knife from the Jackson's Art Studio Essentials range. Uh, and I've basically just squeezed out three different colors of paint onto the flat underside of the uh, palette knife blade. Um, the colours are Burnt Sienna, uh, Payne's Grey and some Turquoise. So I've just popped that down to one side and now I'm just wetting my paper uh, quite randomly in patches with a uh, large 2 inch wash brush. Basically going from the top corner, zigzagging down, leaving some patches of dry paper where the paint won't run. And I'm just sweeping my palette knife so that the underside scrapes along the paper quite lightly so it doesn't dig in and leave scratches and marks into the watercolour paper. But it scrapes the paint off and makes these wonderful um, marks as you can see. Uh, and just as simply as that we've got our lovely sort of background. We've got some snowy hills, a bit of colour, a bit of texture. And you can see that uh, even when you have less paint on the palette knife, you can still create interesting texture. You can see I'm just checking how much I have left and I'm just going to scrape some smaller marks up onto the left side here. This is just adding a little bit of extra texture into that, uh, that left side, which is going to become a distant hillside and the, uh, the bold sweep that I've made on the right hand side is going to become our foreground. So now all I'm going to do is use the uh, water mister to soften down some of the marks that I've made. So I'm beginning here in the right hand corner giving it a little spray uh, and encouraging some of this paint to move down and soften uh, around this edge. Uh, it's very tempting at this point, of course, to uh, go ahead and spray wildly the whole sheet, which I have certainly done before, and uh, create its own uh, level of abstract beauty. But uh, as this is a snow scene, I wanted this uh, painting to be quite spare and uh, quite delicate. I wanted to maintain as much of the white paper as I possibly could. So I'm being quite careful with the water spray. Uh, and of course one problem is that you do get excess water pooling on your paper which can uh, sometimes cause problems. So I can just dab that out with a little bit of clean tissue uh, or you can use kitchen towel or a clean soft cloth. And then just re-spreading um, the paint by lifting my board up and tipping it uh, and letting the, um, the water that's left, the small amount of water and paint that's left run back. Uh, and prevent the sort of blotting marks that you often get with the tissue. So now I'm happy with that side. To make it a bit easier, I've turned my board upside down and I've just given it another little spray along this edge here, which is quite hard. Um, I just want to get a few little interesting runs coming up from that edge uh, just to create some texture in the background. However, I don't want it to go too far, so I'm blotting now with some more tissue, uh, lifting out the, the paint that's run a bit too far and lifting the water as well, which uh, stops encouraging the paint to move any further down the paper as it doesn't have as much water to run with. 
and there we go, happy with that. Turned it back the right way up. As you can see, I got this run here that I wasn't keen on, this little blue splotch, uh, which at this stage is quite easy to pull out with uh, some tissue and a bit of extra clean water. So just dab with the tissue and then I'm adding a little bit of clean water with my brush uh, to just soften down the mark that's left and dabbing it again. And while it's not absolutely perfect, it's at least uh, not a big old splotch. <laughs> now the temptation here is to uh, keep fiddling with the painting, keep adding bits and dabbing away, but I'm going to try and resist that today, uh, as I want this to be quite a sort of simple, quite a spare looking abstract. So I'm just going to leave it now to dry flat uh, on this newspaper. You can see that I've been painting flat as well, rather than propped up at an angle. Uh, and this is the result. This is the first wash now dry and you can see how the water has really softened down some of those hard edges that we got from the palette knife swipe. Uh, I'm actually really pleased with how this has come out. <laughs> it can tend to be a little bit uh, of a lottery sometimes with these uh, abstracts, how they actually look once they're dry, but I'm really pleased with this. Uh, I'm sort of seeing a, uh, a distant snowbank, a distant hill on the left hand side, that lovely big uh, sweep of white space. Uh, and on the right side, this uh, foreground, which is the uh, hillside closer to us. So I'm deciding to emphasize what I see by introducing um, some more realistic detail, which is just designed to help guide the viewer's eye uh, into seeing what I see as well. Uh, so to do that, I'm introducing first a, uh, a bit of a tree here, just sort of leaning out of this uh, hilltop. And all I'm doing is um, just using my small brush. This is just a small round synthetic brush that I'm using uh, and just bringing the branches slowly up from the ground using quite light feathery strokes. Um, I don't need this to be too uh, super realistic, but I do want it to, of course, look um, tree-ish, <laughs> if that is the correct word. Um, so again, I'm just taking my time and I'm using um, some Payne's Grey mixed with a little bit of uh, Burnt Sienna just to soften it down slightly uh, and just, yeah, taking my time using lots of uh, loose strokes to uh, build up um, a really nice sort of overhanging tree shape. Now, as you can see, I'm leaning my tree over uh, leftwards mostly. That's the directionality I'm giving these branches because I want the feel that this tree is sort of um, reaching up and sort of spreading out into the painting, uh, reaching out a hand towards those distant hills, if you like. Uh, that's just my particular take on this uh, sort of composition. This is inspired by some of the, um, the small sort of um, stunted hawthorn and blackthorn trees that I saw on my recent visit to Trickmere Haven in the UK, uh, which is a beautiful river valley, but um, it's very open and flat in parts and the wind really does sweep up from the sea uh, and you get these uh, lovely trees that have been uh, contorted slightly by the wind and by the directionality of the coastal sort of breeze that comes up and they very definitely lean in a particular direction. You can always tell uh, which way the wind usually blows in these places. So that is what inspired uh, this particular tree here. You can see I've really got those branches leaning to the left. Um, not entirely, we've got a little bit on the right hand side as well, but that's a bit more sparse. Um, but this, of course, is just my personal take uh, on this idea of um, tree-ishness. 
<laughs> and of course when you are painting your own uh, semi-abstract uh, painting you can choose to add a different sort of tree perhaps a pine tree or a fir tree would look lovely it all depends on what you end up with from your first sort of initial wash that you do with the palette knife or I know that some people prefer to use um, part of a credit card or a store card and call it a card swipe. Uh, it's exactly the same technique and it yields uh, really interesting and uh, unique results. So this is the whole tree painting process that I'm trying to make sure that I show you here just to get a sense of how uh, easy it is to just carefully and slowly build up the branches and build up the sort of thickness of the trunk and get a really nice natural looking um, but also slightly impressionistic tree that fits into your uh, chosen landscape. I'm just going to add a quick little piece of detail around the base of the tree just to sort of root it into that hillside a little bit more. So now it's time to add a bit of detail onto this uh, left side of the painting. I'm going to add in a bit of a tangle of wild shrubbery and uh, little stunted trees again. Uh, but I want them to appear quite faint uh, because I want them to be in the distance uh, when compared, of course, to our foreground and that lovely sort of larger tree that I've just put in there. So again, with my small brush, um, I've mixed up a little bit of burnt sienna with some Payne's grey but I've left it a bit lighter um, and put in a bit more burnt sienna this time um, and I'm just painting in a really loose rough tangle of shapes along this uh, left hand side, the top of this left hand bank and I'm sort of just following the shape that's been left uh, by the paint that ran upwards in the initial wash that I put down, that uh, shape that I managed to pull out with the spray paint, that's going to form the backdrop uh, for this particular part of the painting. And you can see I'm really just being quite loose and quite free with my paintbrush and just sort of doing a, a little tangle here, which I'm now blotting out with uh, a piece of clean tissue. And you can see it's left uh, an impression of a shape <laughs> rather than the shape itself, uh, if that makes sense. It's pulled out a little bit of the uh, paint that was already there and really softened down those marks so they appear a little bit more faint and a little bit more misty uh, than they would be if I just simply painted them on, which is exactly the look I'm going for with this part of the painting. So I'm just going to continue uh, doing that sort of piece by piece. You can see there just blotting out again and softening down. Uh, it's important I think to do this sort of thing in sections rather than doing one big old spread and then trying to blot it all out because you can only do this while the paint is wet. If you leave it for too long and let it dry uh, then it just won't work. So I've just skipped ahead a little bit. You can see I've added some more detail 
uh, using exactly the same technique that I've just showed you. Um, I just thought I would speed up the video a little bit uh, and you can see that I'm just adding a bit more detail onto the actual white of the painting now. And uh, again, but using the same technique, so this really, really light mixture of some burnt sienna softened down with a little bit of Payne's grey and then just dabbing out with a tissue uh, to make sure it doesn't look too harsh or too dark a colour. At this point, I think it's fair to say that um, it's best left to personal preference just how much detail you want to put into a painting or how little. Um, I'm happy with this little tangle of uh, background shrubbery. So now I'm just going to move on to adding a little bit of extra detail into this snowbank by putting in some really rough grasses here. And you can see I'm still using the same colour scheme, so this is burnt sienna, and I've mixed it up actually with a little bit of the turquoise colour that I still had. Uh, I had some on my palette, and I'm just making a really nice uh, mix of colours and just using really loose, uh, simple upward strokes with my small brush to get some sturdy grasses peeping through the snow. And I'm just following along this sort of really scruffy looking line that I scraped in with the palette knife earlier. And that's just giving this bit a little bit of detail. And now you can really see uh, that adding those grass details has just brought that to the foreground and we really get the sense that this is uh, some sort of really rough, sturdy, tough grass that's uh, poking through that lovely, blank, new fallen snow. And as you can see once again, I've just moved the camera ahead a little bit. Uh, we've got these lovely tufty grasses poking up all over the place. Again, you can add as much or as little as you like, but uh, now it's time for the finishing flourish to this painting. I'm adding in a handsome red fox <laughs> into the foreground here. So I'm using the burnt sienna to paint the fox because <laughs> it is my uh, favourite colour to use for painting these lovely, uh, lovely red foxes. I think it's the perfect blend of a sort of quite a natural looking earth tone, but it still has that wonderful vibrancy of colour that you uh, that you see when you look at a beautiful red fox uh, in the wild. They're some of my most favourite animals uh, and I love adding them into my paintings. So here is one for you today. And really I'm trying to keep this um, relatively simple. All you need for this is a decently sketched sort of pencil outline which you can then go in and carefully sort of fill in with paint. Um, I'm adding a little bit of Payne's Grey into the part that I've just painted uh, while it's still wet so we get a little bit of uh, wet and wet blending here. This just gives a little bit of movement and a little bit of depth uh, and a little bit of shadow into the fox's coat uh, and helps us to define things like limbs and uh, muscle so he's not just a uh, bit old orange blob on the scenery. <laughs> Uh, one thing I will note is that it's a lot easier doing that sort of uh, blending to make an animal's fur look realistic if you're using uh, different paper. Today I'm using hot press paper to paint on, which is a really, really lovely paper. It's wonderfully smooth uh, and really quite elegant. I do enjoy it, but it does um, mean that wet and wet is slightly harder just because I think that you get a more interesting texture more easily if you're using cold press paper where the paint more naturally sort of ebbs and flows and moves and settles into the little bumps and grooves that are left uh, by the uh, press impression uh, into the paper. Uh, and of course rough paper as well is particularly good for this sort of thing. Um, but you can do it on hot press uh, <laughs> as I'm doing right now. So I'm trying to leave that dainty little sliver of white just above his elbow there to help differentiate his uh, sort of foreleg from the rest 
of the, uh, the fox's body. And I'm also being quite careful just filling in the chest area. I want to leave a little white patch um, as quite often you see foxes, or at least the urban foxes around here anyway, they have a sort of little white, uh, little white bib fronts, <laughs> which I think is very dear. So I'm going to try and leave um, a little bit of white in this fox's coat as well. So I'm basically just bringing the colour up across the neck and to the ear and I'm going to um, stop there for now with this uh, larger brush. I'm going to switch to a finer detail brush just to put in the face because that's a little bit um, more delicate. Um, but you can use a brush like this or a mop brush and it's the easiest way to put in that signature red tail is to just be brave and do it in one big old sweep. And just like that, and you've got that fine point and then you press down with the belly of the brush and move across and you get that lovely signature natural looking uh, red tail. And I just added another touch of Payne's Grey into the tip of the tail for that little black tassel tip. Um, that's just going to flood in wet and wet as well and blend really nicely when it dries. And again a little bit more Payne's Grey just to help define that back leg. Now I know that tail as well doesn't quite fit the uh, pencil outline that I put down but um, I, I decided that I really like the shape of that single brush stroke so that I'm just going to leave it and then rub out the pencil marks later. Uh, the pencil is of course just a guideline for what you actually put down onto the paper and if you change your mind halfway through then uh, <laughs> no one's going to judge you uh, but yourself probably. <laughs> So as you can see, I've switched out to my smaller brush now just to uh, carefully fill in the details on the fox's face. Uh, this is a size 2 slash 0 brush from my miniature brush set. Uh, it's very good. Uh, it's fine enough to do these uh, smaller marks like the ears uh, without sort of getting them blobby. Um, but it does also carry enough paint to... Uh, not have to continually keep going back and uh, dipping onto my palette, which is really, really useful. So you can see that again I'm using some Payne's Grey to add in some details wet and wet just around the fox's ears just to get a little bit more detail uh, just to make them stand out from the, uh, the rest of the painting. It's also handy to uh, use the... Um, the really nice part of uh, wet and wet painting means that you can just add in a little droplet of colour and let it spread and uh, blend on its own. So I've used that to do a little bit of shading in the fox's face, trying to get uh, some shape and uh, three dimensionality in there. So while I'm just waiting uh, for that to dry and settle on its own, I'm just going to come back and add in uh, the rest of the detail uh, on his limbs.
and again I'm just going to be coming in again with a bit of paint spray adding a bit more dark detail in this case I'm giving him a little pair of uh, dark black coloured socks So now that I've had time to dry, uh, I've left that for a bit until the paint has been completely dry and now I'm just going to add some final touches uh, to the face. So as well as building up a little bit of shape around the muzzle, I realise that of course uh, he needs to see, so we need to put in uh, a little bit of an eye there. Uh, what I'm actually doing is putting in a bit of excess paint which I can dab out and uh, this is actually going to create a lighter patch um, in the uh, in the fox's face which is going to make do for the eye which um, I should have left earlier but that was my mistake <laughs> uh, we all make them um, but actually it's worked out all right because now I can just paint around that lighter patch that I've just dabbed out with the tissue and just turn that into uh, a little dark eye peering upwards perhaps hoping to find uh, a tasty rabbit somewhere <laughs> along that grassy uh, that grassy hill and again I'm using Payne's Grey to just dot in a little detail for the eye and for his little black nose um, you could of course use black but uh, I didn't want to get a fresh colour onto my palette so I'm using what I had and here we are now with the finished painting um, thank you everybody so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed watching this scene come together. Uh, for me this was a bit of a special one as I love doing the semi-abstract palette knife uh, style of paintings. They feel really fresh and spontaneous and I <laughs> never quite know how they're going to turn out. But I'm pleased with the way that this one did and I really hope you enjoyed watching it come together too. Uh, if anybody has an idea for uh, any names for this handsome little fox friend, uh, please pop them below. Please also stick around during the week for the rest of Lois Davidson's amazing watercolour tutorials that are on their way. Uh, and a big thank you from me as well. I'm happy to be here. hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all again next Monday. Uh, wishing you all uh, a very good day and happy painting. <laughs>